Newborn babies live on milk. We're mammals, and we can live on milk. I went to bomb shelters and just gave my products to people because there was no dairy at all, and I wanted them to stay alive. I am Mikhailo Trevetsky. I was born, grew up, and live in Ukraine. I have an MBA degree. Large holdings used to hire me to make their businesses profitable. Usually, it's men who milk the cows. In Britain, I've never seen a woman milking cows. The farmer does it himself or asks his sons, but never women. Women give water to calves or do something else, but milking is men's work. On my farm, too. Now, I have 16 cows and produce 200 liters of milk every day. I serve more than a thousand people per week and feed them with milk. I didn't wait for the summons for the army. I saw a regional officer and approached him. Sir, let me address you. I am Mikhailo Trevetsky, a farmer from the village. I have 40 head of cattle. I am alone now with my animals. What is your command? Should I shoot them and leave for service? He said, we are military professionals. We are going to fight. You should feed people. I drive up to the bomb shelter, and at that moment, the air siren goes off. I open the car, people ran out, took the milk, and cried gratefully because they had sat there hungry for several days. Especially when a jet fighter was flying. The farm just squatted. All the animals seemed to try to get down, flying, vva, and they froze. They didn't understand what was happening. I tried to calm them down, but I didn't understand myself. Is, is it our plane or not? There was a moment that made me worry more than any active hostilities. When they were hungry and I had no food for them. The village where I bought the hay from the farmer was occupied. I couldn't get there because the bridge was blown up. Another village where I bought grains had a road dug up so the tanks couldn't take it, and I also couldn't drive there. I thought I'd have to release them into the snow or even shoot them so they didn't suffer a long starvation death. I clenched my teeth and said, we will survive. I was actually saying goodbye to my family. I didn't know if they would come back or not. I gave them my protective amulet and promised it would keep them safe. And so it was. They came back home on Sunday. I say, they'll graduate with honors, like their father. Sure, like their father. Who needs those honors? They're like their mother, doing their best. I've always wanted to do what my parents do, since I was a child. And they told me that I should be who I want to be. It's her decision. We're not pushing her to anything. It's not like, you know, we're a family of doctors and that's it. Choose any Ukrainian university, I said. And she chose veterinary medicine. Oh, my manunchi, manunchi, I go, I go, I go to you, I go. I have seven adult heifers. Here's Vakula and Javelina. Girls dominate on my farm. I understood one thing, that a small farmer is the most effective combat unit of the country's food security. You don't have to be in the military to protect. I'm a veterinarian. I'm a farmer. I get up and work. Whether there's shooting or shelling, I get up and work. I have milk. 
I get into the car during sirens or shootings from all sides. I deliver milk to people. I do my job. We used to invest our money. Now we're investing our souls. What we usually did is not enough anymore. I put my soul into this farm today, and I won't sell it to anyone, neither for money nor give it to the Russians. I want to pass it on to the next generation of Ukrainians who will work here on our land.